Welcome back to JetBlue Park, everybody. My name is Mike Petralia, joined as always by the site editor and the Red Sox senior writer, Rob Bradford for WEEI.com. Rob, we are drawing to a close. We can see the finish line in sight for these Red Sox, the pending World Series champions in their 2014 spring training. And still, no deal with David Ortiz. He was on the field today uh, laughing and, and chatting a little bit with uh, Larry Lucchino, the team president. Any word on, on how much closer the two sides might be to getting a deal done? No, I, you know, I, I don't think that anything's certainly done, but they're progressing toward it. They continue to talk. And, and obviously, David wants to get done this stuff before the season because we know what has happened in the past when he doesn't have a contract and it becomes a distraction. He talks about it. And, uh, and I think that'll probably be the case. If this is something that's a priority for him. That's clear. Um, and I think the Red Sox do want to get it done. So if you're asking me if I would be surprised if it got done, I would say no. I do think both sides are both. Oh, and also along those same lines, are both sides currently talking, as far as you know, down here in Florida? Yeah, I think they're both talking. I think John Lester and the Levinson, which is John Lester's agents, are, are both talking as well. So those are two priorities in terms of trying to get something done. It'll be interesting, though, Travis, to see how they approach it if something isn't locked down by the time Open Day rolls around, because then you get into the regular season, the dynamic changes. So will they come out and say, we're going to postpone talks for a little bit if they don't have something done for the other spring training? David Ortiz currently uh, struggling uh, big time at the plate. It is only spring training, obviously. Doesn't mean anything last year. As John Farrell said before today's game with the New York Yankees, he didn't have any Major League spring training. He got in a couple of bats towards the end of camp uh, and had one of the best, most productive seasons he's had. Uh, I guess the question for you, Rob, that I have. He's two for 30 in camp. Do you think he's at all distracted by still not having a deal? No, I don't think so. I think that this is just how spring training is. And David Ortiz, a couple of years ago, had one of my favorite spring training lines, which was, you know, <laughs> yes, well, yeah, they, they, there's a reason why they don't put spring training stats in the back of baseball. And he's right. He, he hasn't hit over 250 since 2006 in spring training. And we just go back to last year. And last year was a case of where he didn't play spring training and he didn't do anything in spring and very few in bats in Triple A, and then he had one of his best years in his career. So I don't think he's worried. The most important thing is his bat speed's there, he's healthy. You have those two things, and you're going to hit the ground running the regular season starts. A bit of news today. Uh, we do know who the utility infielder will be to start the season. That will be Jonathan Herrera. He was acquired in an offseason trade with the Colorado Rockies, the trade. Uh, that sent Franklin Morales and uh, three minor leaguers to Colorado and the Red Sox. Got some veteran insurance uh, in the middle of the infield uh, because of, as we found out, came to find out, Stephen Drew's very much uncertain future in, in Major League Baseball. So Jonathan Herrera beats out Brock Holt. Not really a surprise. No, I don't think so. I think Herrera is more of a shortstop, and that's what they want to prioritize him being able to play shortstop. And I actually think Herrera got a lot better at third base as a spring went along. This is a guy who has really good instincts. He can run the bases probably better than most people on this roster. And he can play all three defensive positions in the infield. And so he's exactly what you want. And on top of it, he's a switch hitter. So I think this is the reason they target him when they were trading Morales. And this is exactly what they got. And as you said, Trax, this is insurance for Stephen Drew. Stephen Drew was depth. This is all what Stephen Drew's signing was all about. You cannot have enough depth. Well, a guy like Herrera with the league experience gives you depth. Uh, maybe not at the level of Stephen Drew, right. but certainly a uh, good utility. And a, a guy, really, actually is probably more versatile, certainly, uh, than Stephen Drew is. He can play all three uh, infield positions, uh, that obviously doesn't include first base. Uh, we move on to the starting rotation. John Farrell would not confirm it, but uh, really is no surprise at this point the way the rotation's lined up. It'll be John Lester starting on opening day, March 31st. I thought there was a chance. I thought there was a chance he might say, John Lester is our opening day starter. But what he said was, was. Do the math. Yeah, you do the math. Look at how we got our stars lined up. You can figure it out. And I understand where he's coming from. Something happens. I don't want to announce something to get back on it. But everyone knows the deal here. Lester number one, Rocky number two, DeBron three, maybe four, and then you get to Buckholz at five. And, uh, and so, I mean, 
mean, that's what it is. And I think that the most interesting aspect of that is the guy who's pitching tonight. They want to give him a little bit more rest and more potentially matching him up against the number five side. Sure. It doesn't always work out that way, but there's a possibility. Yes. And uh, also, John Farrell announcing that uh, a lot of the starters will get see action uh, this Friday and Saturday as the team makes a, a bit of a road trip uh, up uh, towards Central Florida, uh, taking on the Philadelphia Phillies in Clearwater on Friday and taking on the Atlanta Braves in Lake Buena Vista on Saturday. Any surprise if so many starters are gearing up uh, in about nine days? Away from opening day? Well, the surprise is that you're gearing up and making the trip, right? And right. It's, it's the longest trip of the spring. But he, they understand that this has to be the priority of getting on the field. John Farrell talked about getting these guys out there on the field to regularly start to play almost on the first game. And that's why you're going to really see Saturday in Orlando and see the that this is going to be the primarily what you're going to see when the season rolls out, with the exception of the game where season is going to make the trip. But all next week, you're going to see a lot of the regulars and this is what the friends are going to look like. And your Grady Sizemore daily update. <laughs> uh, he will play in a minor league game on Saturday. He will not make the trip up to Central Florida. Neither will uh, David Ortiz. He'll also stay behind. But the uh, bigger news is Grady Sizemore will play Saturday in a minor league game back here in Fort Myers. Uh, and then uh, play Sunday and Monday uh, here in um, Southwest Florida as he tries to gear up get those three consecutive games in that uh, everybody is pointing to as a sign that he may be ready to actually uh, win that starting job in center field. We will be on the scene in Central Florida, both in Clearwater and in Lake Buena Vista. Be sure to follow along as Rob Bradford and yours truly have all the Red Sox coverage on the Red Sox page on WBEI.com. For my boss, Rob Bradford, I'm Mike Petralia on WBEI.com.